Rock 102, Springfield's Class of Rock. It's 535. And Fleetwood Mac with Bax and Nagel and Rock 102. It's going to be a sunny day today, but a little bit cooler. Only a high of 67. And then uh, tonight, partly cloudy, low of 44. Then for tomorrow, mostly sunny with a high of 65. It's kind of a chilly 47 degrees out right now in downtown Springfield. Hey, I'll tell you what. Someone could win a thousand bucks, and all they have to do is write down a simple word after eight o'clock and put it into Rock 102. The keyword to cash. The next keyword coming up after eight. Make sure you're listening. Could be money in your pocket. Also, Nate Costa from the Springfield Thunderbirds is going to be here today. Their home opener is going to be on Saturday uh, against the Laval Rocket. That's going to be a big, big deal. We'll be talking to Nate later on this morning. Uh, and there's other stuff too. Loads of other stuff. Bax and Nagel on Rock 102. Rock 102, Springfield's Classic Rock. It's 552 and Foreigner with Bax and Nagel on Rock 102. It is uh, going to be, and I'll tell you in one second here. Uh, Take your time, Steve. Uh, yeah, it's a four-hour show. That's all right. Mix the sun and clouds, uh, 67 tomorrow. Mix the sun and clouds with a high of 64. It's 42 right now in downtown Springfield. Hollywood Trash is brought to you by Western Mass Masons. Call for all your foundation and chimney needs. Somehow you still care about what's happening in Hollywood. So from Tinseltown, 3,000 miles away, it's Steve Nagel's Hollywood Trash. You're not, you're not going to believe this. What's the matter? So I got to log in. It, it's making me log in. Yeah. And I don't have my phone because it's in the car to to authenticate the uh, thing. So I, I can't get on the, the internet right now. So let me understand this. <clears throat> in order for you to give Hollywood trash a real shake, you have to have your phone. Well, I guess I don't. I guess I don't. All right. I think I got it. You think so? I think I got it. You got it? I, 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 what is with this uh, this company authentication thing? I don't know. You know, it's almost as if uh, they're being a little bit oversensitive about the idea of us being hacked by some sort of, I don't know, nefarious plot or or hacker. Well, that could be. I mean, it's There's not There's nothing to of. steal here. There, yeah, you're right. Believe me. There ain't nothing to steal here. All right. I'm not necessarily saying that Tony Busby, the attorney who's representing 120 uh, Diddy victims, mm-hmm. is using this case to make a name for himself, but but he's kind of using this case to make a name for himself. Uh, here's the latest revelation. Busby claims he sent letters to a bunch of A-list celebrities who have at least some knowledge of Diddy's freak-offs in order to resolve matters privately. And he says some of these celebrities, people we would all recognize, have already settled just to keep their names out of the press. Uh, in other Diddy news, his key to Miami Beach is being rescinded, and ABC is airing a 2020 special called The Secret Life of Diddy tomorrow night. I would be very concerned about having to return the key to the city. Yeah, He's I prob- know. He probably only made copies. Yeah, All I you know. gotta do is take it to a Rocky's Ace Hardware. You know, they can redo keys. Wouldn't that, wouldn't that suck you to tell your friends, hey, yeah, I can get you in City Hall. No problem. Yeah. Come down. And then all of a sudden, they all come down, and you're like, I... Uh, I don't know. I, I think I left the key uh, in my other car. Or my next other, my next other. to my phone as I was trying to log into the Rock 102 computer system. Yeah, does anybody have any baby oil? I can uh, wedge this door open. <laughs> the key's a little sticky. Yeah, it's, it's a little sticky. Uh, but, but if these celebrities are settling, their names are eventually going to come out anyway, are they not? Because I don't know how they're not. I mean, because you're talking about a federal case. Yeah, and once all that stuff is unsealed, you're going to see who it is anyway. Un- unless the trial is going to be, you know, without any press or I, with any reporters. I mean, how? I mean, how are you going to have that trial yeah. without some of those names coming out? I don't know. Chapel Rowan has a uh, quick rise to has had a quick rise to stardom, and she's not uh, holding back when it comes to calling out the haters from her past. Before performing, my kink is karma on Sunday at the Austin City Limits Festival. She said, "Quote." I usually dedicate this song to my ex, but I dedicate this song to my effing theater teacher who kicked me out, bitch. I'm here. 
Well, maybe she kicked you out because of your bad, aggressive attitude. Yeah, I know. Maybe because uh, you're, you're, you don't have a very nice demeanor about you. I mean, you called her a bitch. I mean, come on. That's, yeah. You're not, you're not going to get a big role on that one in a high school play. She sings that uh, H-O-T-T, you know that song? Yeah. I don't don't even know the rest of the lyrics. I just know. That would be the other reason I wouldn't give her a big role in a high school play. Somebody took a TikTok and uh, like AI'd B. Arthur on the Golden Girls singing that song (laughs) next to the piano. (laughs) It was that, you ever see that one where uh, Rue McClanahan's, they're like in a, I don't know what song she's actually singing, but... It's like Rue McClanahan and uh, B. Arthur are having some kind of, like, beef or something. Yeah. And, you know, it's a sad scene where you know, B. Arthur's singing uh, next to a piano in front of a bunch of people. But in this particular video, somebody AI'd her singing that Chapel Roan song. I thought it was pretty good. If B. Arthur were alive today, I wonder how she'd react to that. She'd probably be, uh, she'd probably be upset. I would be. Yeah. That's not the song I was singing in that. B. Arthur probably even liked that song. Most of us don't. Offset recently accused his estranged wife, Cardi B, of cheating on him when she was pregnant with their third child and she didn't deny it. Then uh, podcaster DJ Academics, spelled Mm A-K-A-D-E-M-I-K-S, made the claim that the other man was an NFL wide receiver. He didn't name him, but described him as a dog with a large sexual appetite an extensive dating history. People are speculating like crazy on social media, but two names seem to have uh, risen above the rest. Houston Houston Texans receiver Stephon Diggs and Tyreek Hill of the Miami Dolphins, who supposedly has a Nick Cannon-esque tribe of offspring. Uh, But Diggs appears to be getting the uh, most of the smoke here. Uh, this, this This is just heating up. I'm telling you, this is a hot story. Hot. Well, I mean... I can also uh, say another guy who was into pregnant chicks. You got a buddy? I got a buddy. <laughs> I wonder if he's like reading in his new home. I'm sure he is. Yeah. Because he's got a buddy. I got a like, buddy who's into pregnant chicks. And that's a fascinating little factoid. Yeah. I can listen to that story all day long. Uh, how about some country music news? Oh, shoot. Well, Luke Combs and Eric Church just announced a benefit concert for the victims of Hurricane Helene. It's called Concert for Carolina. It'll take place on Saturday, October 26th at the Bank of America Stadium in Charlotte. Yeehaw. Hope that doesn't conflict with the concert we're going to have to do for Hurricane Milton when that blows through Florida. Isn't that crazy? Like... Well, we'll have to talk about that after six about yeah. the uh, the difference. Well, yeah, Milton's worse. Well, Milton's I'm, a bigger jerk. I'm sorry if you're listening to this at nine thirty-five, you'll have to go back on the podcast and listen to that the time we talked about it at six six a.m. Man, you're blowing my mind with this uh, time travel we're talking about. Well, they're doing the best they can. All proceeds from the concert will be split evenly between Luke and Eric. Luke's funds are uh, earmarked for groups like Samaritan's Purse. Mana Food Bank and Second Harvest Food Bank of Northwest North Carolina. And I love those bands. Eric's, yeah, I know, isn't that great? And then uh, Eric's money will go to his cause, Chief Cares. Okay. Okay. So there you go. Uh, Kim Kardashian's sister Chloe posted a snap of Kim completely topless. Really? Yeah. Well, she must have had something to say. Oh my God! The last time I had a snap topless was when Ray J covered my chesticles with high fructose porn syrup in that sex tape <laughs> you can purchase on YouPorn for thirty nine ninety five. That's in everything these days. Uh, you can't go anywhere with that, uh, with that, that stuff. Uh, Caitlin? Well, I never got that done and dirty with your mother, Chris Kim, but uh, once gave her the triple donkey Congo with a puna fish sandwich. <laughs> Made a table for two at the Eaton Town Sushi Buffet. You ever been to Eaton Town? No, I can't say I have. Oh, it's a mess down. There. I bet. What are you What are you trying to say? What I'm trying to say is I finished off with a peanuts butter and belly sandwich. Do you ever have a peanuts butter and belly sandwich? Not nuts, peanuts. Yeah, no, no, I haven't uh, haven't had one of those. No belly sandwiches. <laughs> Do you ever have a clam belly sandwich? No. Would you like one? Not now. And that's your Hollywood trash. I'm not going to do. Uh. And now, Bax's View from the Couch. Brought to you by Rocky's Ace Hardware, Outdoor Power Headquarters, Steel, Ego, Craftsman, and Aaron's. Hey, good morning, sports fans. How the heck are you? 
Folks, as you know, the Patriots played a terrible game on Sunday against the Miami Dolphins. I don't think that's in dispute. Lots of reasons for this, of course. Dumb rules, bad plays, penalties, and oh yeah, they played like straight-up garbage. It almost makes you wonder whether things would have been any different had a player like team captain safety Jabril Peppers had been on the field on Sunday. Sadly, he was not. Why? Because Jabril Peppers was far too busy getting arrested for acting like a jacked-up psychopath instead. On Saturday, police in Braintree arrested Peppers for, among other things, assault and battery, assault with a deadly weapon, strangulation, and possession of a Class B substance believed to be cocaine. Peppers, who turned 29 on Friday, was taken into custody after allegedly striking the woman up to six times, tearing off her clothes, and putting her outside. The details from this point forward only get worse, the least of which was the clear plastic bag filled with a powdery substance later tested positive for cocaine. Yesterday, Jabril Peppers was arraigned in uh, Quincy District Court, pled not guilty, and then posted $2,500 in bail and walked away. Meanwhile, the Patriots released a statement acknowledging that they were aware of the situation, but that they would not make any further comments. So let me try. Folks, I don't care who you are or what position you play on the New England Patriots or anywhere else for that matter. If this is the sort of behavior that you typically resort to, if abuse is your primary response to solving anything, then you should not be allowed the privilege of playing in the NFL. Because you see, there are no justifiable reasons to choke somebody out because you're not enjoying your birthday weekend. Listen, I know the man has a three-year, $24 million contract, but if I were the Patriots right now, I'd be busy finding a way to get out of that. Patriots got enough problems right now. Paying for an abusive idiot $8 million a year should not be one of them. But hey, enough of my yapping sports brought to you by Rockies Ace Hardware. Allen is the veteran steel train technician of the Westfield Rockies. Now, Allen has an apprentice, Nate. Your steel chainsaw or backpack blower, don't replace it, repair it. It's a steel train tech at every Rockies Ace Hardware. I'm back, that's my view from the couch. Rock, one, rock 102, Springfield's Classic Rock. It's 613 in the Rolling Stones with Max and Nagel on Rock 102. It's uh, going to be, uh, I'll tell you in one second, mix of sun and clouds today uh, with a high of 67. Tomorrow, mix of sun and clouds with a high of 64. It's 41. Uh, if you're living in Florida, the weather's not going to be like this. No, it's going to be much, much worse. This Hurricane Milton is... They're calling it's like the second strongest storm they've ever recorded as they've been recording weather. What I read yesterday, yeah. there have been five category five hurricanes in recorded history. Yeah. And this is one of them. And then they're also saying that this would be the first direct strike that the Tampa area has had in over a century. Yeah. Which is pretty strange to me because you consider how many. Hurricanes have hit Florida and the Carolinas over the years. It seems to be almost like a sitting duck, but this is serious stuff. A Category yeah. 5, you know, we haven't had anything close to that. They say the eye of the hurricane is the smallest they've ever seen at 3.2 miles wide, which that just means that it's just gaining speed by sucking up all that warm water. Yeah. And turning it into a, it's going to drench the entire state, and it's uh, not good. Milton rapidly strengthened into a Category 5 hurricane Monday in the Gulf of Mexico on the path towards Florida, threatening a dangerous storm surge in Tampa Bay and leading to evacuation orders and long gas lines. The storm lends more urgency to the cleanup from Hurricane Helene. That's the other thing they're dealing with. They're still dealing with the, the, the flood surge, the surges that they had from Hurricane Helene, and... People, I'm watching, what was it, ABC World News last night? Yeah. And they're, they're buckets, they're doing bucket loaders of all the junk that had already washed up. Yeah. Because that's going to, it's going to just add insult to injury here. 230 people died from Helene and it didn't even reach a Category 5. And and that's all they know about yet. Yeah. There's Bro, more people it. who are stranded and, you know, the, the problem with rescuing people in the mountains is, is that you can't see people from a helicopter in the daytime. They had one guy who was smart enough, he must have had military experience, to flash a mirror so people could see him yeah. on top of this mountain, and he was he was eventually rescued. Well, think about all the other complications. Mm-hmm. Even getting up 
side of a mountain after you've had you know 10, 15 inches of rain. Yeah. You're talking about washed out roads, washed out mountainsides. Yeah. You know, you know, you the, the devastation of just the ground itself. Trying to get up a mountain with all the mud and the muck has to be nearly impossible. I don't even know how you do it. I don't even know how you, you, helicopters. I mean, you can't. You, you've you got can only bunch, do that so so many times. Well, that's it. Know. That's very. That's exactly it. Dozens of t- residents and tourists lined up with suitcases and other belongings to catch an evacuation ferry off Halbox Island on the eastern tip of the Yucatan Peninsula. The oh, is that Florida? The Yucatan Peninsula. Um, is that no? That's uh, that's Mexico. Yeah. Oh, maybe because it's in the Gulf of Mexico right, right now. Uh, Hallbox, popular for its shallow seascapes, may be one of the closest points that Hurricane Milton brushes before moving towards Florida. The low-lying inland tends to flood even with light rain. Off and on, resident uh, Marilou Macias was calm and smiling, but was afraid of what would Milton do to the island. We're afraid something might happen to us. We're going someplace safer, uh, she said for herself and her daughters. We decided it was best to leave the island. I, I think that's probably yeah. That's idea. probably pretty smart. Uh, President Biden spoke with uh, Governor Ron DeSantis to discuss preparations in Florida for the approaching Hurricane Milton and ongoing recovery efforts from the devastation caused by Hurricane Helene. The White House confirmed that the president's call with the governor after Vice President uh, Harris's earlier on Monday accused DeSantis of playing political games and engaging in political gameship over the federal response to Harold Helene. Harris had reached out to the governor last week, but said the two never spoke. Uh, and then they go into this whole thing. There's people who need help. And when you have this sparring back and forth yeah. over who to help, it, it that's you're not helping matters at all. This is really not that. the time for, for politics to be entering into this. This is about you having to evacuate millions of people out of this area. Yeah. I mean, you're talking about 7 million people. Uh, you know, trying to get out of the the Tampa area and 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 cities and towns, you know, connected to it. It's a tall order to get that many people to safety, and and many people just simply aren't going to yeah. be able to. And then you have to worry about, well, you know, what's going to be the the damage once this thing hits? It's 165 mile an hour winds going through this. I mean, when it's blowing stuff, it's like you know, it's like you're you're blowing torpedoes right. all over the place. Right, and and on top of that, the storm surge. You're talking 15 feet. 15 feet. That's yeah. what they're calling for for this yeah. thing. And you know, I I don't I don't get I don't know why they don't shut the power off prior to because I saw this guy on TikTok cuz that's where I get all my hard hitting news from. Uh but I saw this guy on TikTok who lives on the water's edge. Yeah. And he's in his mansion in a kayak. In his living room, or what was once his living room, right. he's in the kayak uh, taking TikTok videos, and the lights are all on. And I guess well, the, the water clearly hasn't reached the circuit breaker box yet. Or what? Well, is it like a generator or something? I know this looked like it was like full on power because you could see the lights outside on all the other all the other ha- homes and buildings yeah. and all that stuff. I I don't know. Are you? You're sitting there. If you have that kind of money, wouldn't you leave? I would. Yeah. Uh, but I don't have that kind of money. But if they told us, hey, you got to go, you got to yeah. move. I would leave. I, I would go. Yeah. Fact, I wouldn't even think twice about it. And, 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 and again, I said this last week, there are a lot of people who can't afford to go. That, that's just the reality of it. There's people who don't have cars. There's people who don't. The, all the transportation has been suspended down there, so it's not like you can hop on a bus and and take off. Right? Or maybe you could up until yesterday. But there may there may be bus yeah. there may be bus companies that are specifically doing just that. Yeah, taking their buses with you know people that can't afford to go anywhere. Right, but there's still a lot of people who just don't have the means to do that. And you know when you talk about people, there there are people who simply can't afford it. But then there are idiots who just stay there. When they have the means to leave, you know, I've seen these uh, these pictures of you know, you know, gas lines. You know, people just you know, in in panic, you know, filling, yeah. you, you you know, moving all their valuables out of their house. I mean, I I you know, it, I would take my wife, I'd take my dog, I'd uh, I take this table lamp, yeah. I take this paddle game, um, and that would be all. The mayor of Tampa issued a dire warning saying, you're going to die. 
I mean, if you want to try to scare people to get people out of an area, uh, that's a pretty good way to do it. I mean, yeah, it's a... It seems hyperbolic, but when you look at a Category 5 storm like this... You probably are going to die. He's probably not yeah, wrong. She. It's a she. she she's probably yeah. not wrong. Right. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to uh, impose just random genders. No, I, 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 I understand. You didn't know. How would I know? Well, you don't know all the mayors of the major cities in the United States? Uh, no, and especially the ones in Florida. I don't even know the ma- mayors in Western Mass half the time. What are you talking about? Uh, you got... Uh, I got Dom Dom... Dom uh, uh, Will Reichelt, uh, yeah. that other guy, uh, that one lady. Other than that, we got. Uh, let's see. Let's let's start naming. I'm glad we turned this into into this. Let's. Who's the mayor of your city? What's your favorite mayor story? What's your favorite mayor story? Who's your who's who's telling you you're going to die? I mean, is Danny Soskovic still the mayor of Holyoke? <laughs> by 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 all intents and purposes, yes, <laughs> I, still, I think he is. He's still he's still there. I don't even yeah. know. Well, there you go. That's uh, what's going on. If you want to donate to uh, to help these folks, you can go to rock 102com We have some links up there where you can uh, you can donate to credible uh, organizations that will help these folks out. It's six twenty three on rock one hundred two dot com. It's uh, 626 with Bax and Nagel on Rock 102. Uh, Dan Brown will have the full forecast for you. Uh, hey, uh, we got uh, Nate Costa here later on this morning. Mm-hmm. Also, the keyword to cash, your chance to win 1000 bucks and some other stuff, too. Ooh, that sounds fun. Which part? The winning stuff. Yeah, well, and there's Nate that, Co- too. I mean, Nate Costa, yeah, he's, a, he's a snack. He is but, a total, uh, he, yeah. he, he's a snack buffet, that. He's like a, he's just a whole snack machine. Yeah, yeah. Everything from... Chips to famous cookies, Am- famous, 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 famous. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's got it all. He's got it all. That's the truth. Are you ready to laugh? I am ready to laugh. Let's laugh. It's Bax and Nagel's joke of the day. I'm funny how? I mean, funny like I'm a clown. I amuse you. On Rock 102. I make you laugh. Springfield's <laughs> classic rock. What does a male prostitute and the Pink Panther have in common? I don't know, Steve. What does a male prostitute and the Pink Panther have in common? Both are Peter Sellers. Ah, you get it? I get that. Yeah, because the Pink Panther was Peter ah, Sellers, and uh, this guy's uh, ah, a Peter Sellers. You know, I, 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 when I first ah, heard that joke, I thought it was uh, they both insulated their attic with uh, with remember, Owens remember? Corning. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah remember that? Of course, yeah, I do. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah, I oh, thought, you lay those bats down between the joystick. It works out great. You don't think a male prostitute wants to insulate his attic? Well, like he would like anybody else. Uh, I guess he's uh, cleaning out the basement this time, if you know what I'm saying. I know what he's saying. <laughs> Bax and Nagel in the morning on Rock 102, Springfield's classic rock. Here's your Western Mass News. 630 with Bax and Nagel on Rock 102. It's time for news brought to you by Bank ESB. Unlock your potential with Bank ESB's Get Real Checking. Here's local radio icon Steve Nagel. Thanks, Bax. Florida's Gulf Coast brace Tuesday for the impact of Hurricane Milton's winds and expected massive storm surge, which could bring destruction to areas already reeling from Helene's devastation 12 days ago and still recovering from Ian's wrath two years ago. Uh, the Almost the entirety of Florida West Coast was under a hurricane warning early Tuesday as the storm, and its 155-mile-an-hour winds crept towards the state at 12 miles an hour, sucking energy from the Gulf of Mexico's warm water. The strongest Atlantic hurricane on record is 1980's Allen, which uh, reached wind speeds of uh, 190 miles an hour as it moved through the Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico before striking Texas and Mexico. Uh, Milton was downgraded early Tuesday to a Category 4. So, you know, it's not... Hey, this is going to be nothing now. Oh, yeah, it's going to be a piece of cake. It went from a 5 to a 4? That's a big jump. It is a big jump. You know, it can always um, gain speed again. That's the uh, the thing about these storms. Uh, Forecaster said it still posed an extremely serious threat to Florida. Milton had intensified uh, quickly Monday, becoming a Category 5 storm at uh, midday with uh, maximum sustained winds of 180 miles an hour before being downgraded. The uh, center could come ashore tomorrow in the Tampa Bay region, which has not endured a direct hit, as we were talking earlier, in more than a century, which is kind of weird. I, I thought with all the hurricanes going on down there. Yeah, I know. It, it's, I, I was surprised to read that, too, but apparently it's it's the case. They've never had a direct hit. Well, I mean, it's nature. It, it's, you know... I told you this before, down in like New Jersey after Sandy, Hurricane Sandy hit, all a lot of that, that beachfront was gone. Yeah. And people 
you know, four or five years later have had already rebuilt. And the guy I was talking to down there when I was down there, he goes, I don't these people like I don't know how they're affording to build houses again up there because the insurance co- they say in ten years the coastline will be back, you know, probably fifty yards from where it is now. Every t- every time I've been down there and I see, you know, people living on, on coastline property, I always wonder I mean, I know what it was like to have to replace, you know, you, you know, wall board from the ice storms back, you know, you know, a dozen years ago. I remember right. how difficult it was to get an insurance company to to just pay for that because of uh, you know, yeah. all the ice damage we had. But yet, uh, what happens if you have a house on the coastline? It's elevated on stilts, and all of a sudden, boom. A big storm comes bent down, and your house got to be replaced. I can't even imagine the hassle of having to go through an insurance company to get that taken care of. The um, one of the stats I saw yesterday on a news report was the people in the mountains of North Carolina. Yeah, that like a fraction of them only had flood insurance because they're nobody, on a mountain. Nobody ever expected to get flooded out or washed out like that. It's yeah. like a, it's an unprecedented thing. But that, you know, that shouldn't stop people from, I don't know, I just find that kind of stupid. They, oh, your home and your homeowners, oh, well, you didn't get flood insurance, and uh, yeah, I know your whole house is devastated, but uh, we'll, give you, we'll give you the money for the stuff that uh, got ruined. Yeah, by the way, your bill is due in a week. Yeah, exactly. That's, you know, how this works around here. A uh, Chickabee man has been convicted for his role in a large-scale drug trafficking operation distributing cocaine throughout Massachusetts. The whole state? He's a busy He's boy. a busy beaver, isn't he? Uh, 51-year-old Vincente Gonzalez was uh, found guilty on October 3rd following a four-day trial on charges related to cocaine trafficking. He faces up to 40 years in prison. He was convicted of one count of conspiracy to distribute and possess with intent to distribute 500 grams or more of cocaine, as well as uh, one count of possession with intent to distribute. As part of a wide-reaching drug operation, Gonzalez received multiple kilos of cocaine shipped from Puerto Rico to addresses in Chicopee and West Springfield. If anybody can learn from the Steve Nagel College of Knowledge, do not pick up packages sent to you by, from Puerto Rico. Or anywhere. Well, I mean, if you have family in Puerto Rico and they're sending you, I don't know. Uh, well, well, for example, I, I had a friend of mine uh, who lived in Puerto Rico that would send me bags of coffee. And they were delicious coffee. Oh, my God, such good coffee. Yeah. If someone sent me a package of Puerto Rican coffee, I'd accept. I can't remember what they call them. Um, it's like a type of when they find them floating in the water. They, they There's like a name for them. For the bricks of cocaine that they're oh, really? floating in the way, you know, like like a like a plane might have dropped something. Yeah, see, I, they, I I've never bought cocaine by the brick. Well, you haven't lived yet, Bax. <laughs> <laughs> no, I guess not. I got a brick of cocaine and a half a bottle of Tito's. Let's go on a party this weekend. What do you say? <laughs> Let's see which one I finish first. Yeah, he received multiple cocaine shipped to him from uh, ad- from addresses in Puerto Rico to West Springfield. He then distributed the drugs to co-conspirators in the both Springfield and New Bedford areas. And during a search of his residence on July 29th of 2019, authorities seized two kilos of cocaine valued at approximately $60,000 from the basement of his home. The charge of conspiracy to distribute and possess cocaine carries at least five years. Eh, they go on to say how long that is. Uh, Gonzalez was one of 13 individuals indicted on uh, December 19th. Steve, I believe the word is indicted. Um, he's going to jail. I'm pretty sure it's indicted. Once he gets into jail and uh, meets his cell, his roommates, yeah, yeah. And then maybe he'll get uh, indicted. But uh, right now he's indicted. Uh, here's a sick story. Police have arrested two men accused of sexually assaulting two 12-year-old girls in North Kingstown, Rhode Island over the weekend. Officers rushed to a parking lot off Marine Road early Saturday morning after a young girl called and claimed she and her friend were assaulted near a bike path. Investigators believe the girls were at home in Coventry when one of the men contacted them via snap via a public Snapchat account. Through the Snapchat account, police said the men arranged to pick up the girls at a nearby park and drive them to North Kingstown. The victims told officers the two men assaulted them both inside the vehicle and outside in the parking lot. The suspects abandoned the car and left the girls alone in the parking lot 
After the reported assaults, the girls indicated that the men had set up a tent at a nearby beach. Both suspects were eventually found at the beach, along with a 12-year-old boy who appeared to be intoxicated. Detectives learned the men had supplied the boy, who was known to both of them, uh, with marijuana and alcohol. The men, identified by police as 19-year-old Dustin Buckley of Enfield and Austin Summer of Turner's Falls, were taken into custody and are facing numerous charges, including several counts of uh, first-degree sexual assault. Both men are being uh, held without bail. Turner's Falls out here? Yeah, the one the guys from en- one guys from Enfield, oh and the other guys God. from Turner's Falls, Jeez. and they went all the way down to North Kingstown to uh, commit their crimes. Awful. Yeah, and nineteen years old, like. Well, I mean, I mean, it doesn't matter what doesn't matter. age you are. You know, assaulting anybody is wrong, but you know, starting a little young there, don't you think? With your, with your crimes, it's disgusting. Uh, Governor Maura Healey's bill is receiving increasing backlash from gun owners, including a new lawsuit filed in federal court just days ago. Healey decided to immediately implement the new gun law, but a Bellingham gun shop owner has already filed a complaint. The owner alleges that parts of the new law, which updates the definition of assault-style weapons, contradict the Second Amendment protections and civil freedoms. The complaint stated that certain assault-style weapons are allowed under federal law after Congress let a ban expire in 2004. They believe that this new law could violate equal protection, interstate commerce, and firearms rights in the Constitution. The shop owner says 70% of his business will be lost under the new limitations. The gun law passed in July focuses on cracking down on ghost guns, firearms in public places, and the red flag law. The law was uh, was expanded to let police, health care workers, and school officials remove firearms from someone deemed a threat to themselves or others. Also written in the law was the requirement for state residents to obtain a firearm safety certificate, which includes live fire training. The lawsuit stated the new requirements were impossible to meet as no training courses exist right now. Well, well that's a problem. Well, wouldn't that be an opportunity for somebody to open a, a, a shoot 'em up ghost gun uh, shooting school? Actually, Steve, that would be a great opportunity for someone who's looking to, uh, you know, find a side hustle. Yeah, I mean, where, where'd you go to school? I went to g- 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 Ghost Gun College. <laughs> have you ever been to g- 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 Ghost Gun College? They don't have much of a football team, but uh, the graduation rate is pretty high. Oh yeah, well, no, yeah, nobody's really there. Yeah, right. It's <laughs> you, had, you had two, you had two students, and they both graduated. Yeah. Well, I one hundred percent graduation rate. Yes, but the uh, you got that six hundred dollars tuition from each of them. Going to keep that school open for years. Uh, do you know someone who claims to love cold pizza just as much as hot pizza? Sure. Uh, well, this woman is not in that camp of wanting it more, you know, than okay. hot pizza. Right. A 22 year old woman in Florida named Ricky Holly flew into a rage when Domino's delivered a pizza her that she says was cold and uncut. Ricky allegedly drove to her home from the restaurant, argued with the employee, threw the pizza, and damaged the store's phone. Somehow, using that phone or another one, someone called the police. The police came and arrested Ricky for uh, criminal mischief, a misdemeanor. She she spent the night in jail before being released. She was ordered not to have contact with that Domino's location, but she is not prevented from ordering a pizza from another establishment. Well, that's good. (laughs) Can you imagine being disappointed by a Domino's pizza? Domino's is like junk. It's just like the worst. It's it's re- the pizza you order when all the good pizza shops are closed. Well, it, it's I, I will say it came in handy in college because you were broke and it was cheap. And the, yeah, and we could all pool our money together, and you can get a pizza for six ninety nine. That was back in the day. Now it's know. Like, now it's like ten ninety nine. It's an outrage. But uh, yeah, uh, that. That was Domino's was the only place that was open till two or three o'clock in the morning. Yeah, even on a weekday. Same, same when I was a uh, 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 in my youth. That was uh, that was all there was. Yeah. I mean, there were other pizza places, but they were the only ones that delivered, and they only the only ones that would deliver wicked late at night. Yeah, but she can't uh, she can't contact that Domino's location. And why would you want to? Yeah, after you've busted the place up, you're yeah. never gonna. You, you know, some you know the uh, the, the pizza maker is going to do something to that pizza. Thank God they got rid of that 30 minutes or less thing years ago. That was great, though. I used to love the 30 minutes or, le- uh, or, or less Yeah, but that plan. seems like a rushed pizza. 
Yeah, but you didn't have high expectations going in. You knew what you were going to get. You just knew that you were going to get it in 30 minutes or less. Now, if you waited to like uh, daylight savings time and then tried doing that. Yeah. Sometimes you get the free pizza. You're playing it right. Play your cards right. They're all the moment you hang up, they're already 30 minutes late. Well, I know if you live uh, if you live uh, near Wilbraham or uh, the Palmer area, if you uh, order if you leave your car outside of Primo's Pizza in Springfield, it'll be delivered within a few hours. <laughs> Actually, probably less than 20 minutes. The car or the pizza? Both. <laughs> Ironically, uh, I had the p- I ate the pizza on a coffee table that was made with wood and blocks. Yeah. While my car was also on blocks. Yes, it's called Big Dash. <laughs> <laughs> the Palmer police use it all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I'm sure they do. Hey, this pizza is as cold as this jail cell is. <laughs> You're a uh, <laughs> I got this cold. I know it's killing us, <laughs> killing us both. It's gross, and I'm sorry. I don't That's mean to right. do that. Uh, it's going to be mix of sun and clouds today with a high of 67. Tomorrow, more of the same with a high of 64. It's 40 right now in downtown Springfield. I'm Steve Nagel, and that's the news on Rock 102. Oh yeah, Rock 102, Springfield's classic rock at 651 and ACDC with Bax and Nagel on Rock 102. Mix of sun and clouds today with a high of 67. Tomorrow, more of the same with a high of 64. It's 40 right now in downtown Springfield. Listen, I think we're going to be uh, past these colds by the time November 3rd rolls around. That's the night of the Mayflower Marathon comedy night. So I'm going to assume so. that we'll probably be a little bit more on our game that night then that we are like right at this moment because i'm feeling like uh like the last thing i want to do is do is uh you know entertain any of you people right now yeah uh, nobody wants to see the snot bucket and loogie show no they don't but uh, although that was a great nickelodeon program (laughs) you know but yeah until there wanted being some backstage problems you know how uh, things were nickelodeon guy dan got involved uh, the Mayflower Marathon Comedy Night is coming to the Armory at MGM Springfield, uh, November 3rd. It's brought to you by Dave Miner Exterior Home Improvements. Everything is uh, that night is going to benefit the Open Pantry as we get ready for the Mayflower Marathon, which is coming up next month. Uh, Steve Nagel is your headliner, along with uh, special guest Cody Montaigne and Andy McDermott. I'll be your host for the night. Uh, tickets are on sale now at rock102.com. Seating is limited, so don't wait to buy them. You won't want You might want to... Uh, get them in your possession right now. It's the Mayflower Marathon Comedy Night. Brought to you by Dave Miner Exterior Home Improvements and Rock 102 Springfield's Classic Rock. You been to the X anytime uh, lately? Uh, yeah, I've been uh, just uh, just last weekend. I just, uh, well, you alerted me to the story this morning, but I was just reading this. A major reconstruction of the roadway surrounding the X in the Forest Park neighborhood was nearly derailed over a last-minute and seemingly routine city council vote on Monday night. The vote to accept 132 land takings totaling a $569,000 for our permanent and 120 at our temporarily needed for sidewalk construction was necessary before the state opened construction bids on Tuesday. But city councilors aired concerns about having to make the approval at the last minute. The last minute? They've been working on that all summer long, haven't they? Well, they've been talking about this for a number of years, but... Uh, but the uh, the deadline for bids is is, is like now. Yeah, gotcha. Councilors Caterie Walsh and Timothy Allen proposed the easement be moved to subcommittee for more discussion. But Chris Signoli, director of the Public Works, said the city is facing an immediate deadline and could lose funding. If it is not approved, they will not open the bids, Signoli said, uh, adding at a minimum that the project would have uh, to be rebid and, in the worst case, the entire project could be derailed. After a long debate, the council did approve the easements in a 13 to nothing vote. Well, that's not really. If, if it was unanimously done yeah. or, a, you know, 13 to nothing. Well, I think the, the, the argument was that they their backs were against the wall and they really had no choice. They would have been nice. To, in their minds, it would have been nice to have a little bit more time to mull this over. The, Remember, uh, a few months ago, they were worried about. The only thing they were worried about was the number of trees that were going to be cut down. Yeah. That was like the big concern. Never mind the, the hassle of you know rerouting traffic and you know figuring out where to park cars. It's a mess down there right now. It's all it's already a mess. Doing. It's it's a poorly designed intersection. But I don't know. I mean, I know people are like uh, like you know rotaries is a hot thing, but they're doing like mini rotaries, and I'm not even sure that the rotary is like at the X. 
it's on un- it's a little unclear to me what the even the plan is and even by looking at the yeah, the, map. the map is uh, like weird. well what are they doing the uh, project estimated at 24 million dollars is being run by the Mass Department of Transportation and funded with about 16 million in state and federal money design work on the project started a decade ago Plans call for the reconstruction of the X, where uh, Sumner and Belmont Avenues and Dickinson Street join uh-huh. Street Belmont, and it also involves several other streets, including Cliffwood <laughs> and Oakland. <laughs> it calls for several mini roundabouts, as well as repairing and adding site. I think they they're making many roundabouts to come still into the X. That's what it sounds like, and that means two things. That seems stupid to yeah. me. Uh, as Adding sidewalks, bicycle access, et cetera, et cetera. The city received uh, notice from the state to begin work on the land takings and easement in the spring. Pre- I, it just it goes on to say that it could have been derailed the other day, but thank God it wasn't because otherwise you still would have had that one lane. Yeah, and, and through bright nights. And where will those bicyclists go? That's what uh, was my big concern. Of course, if you're riding a bicycle through the X, you're taking your life into your own hands anyway. Yeah, that's a scary thought. But I guess if you have to cross Sumner Avenue, and that's the way you're going. See, maybe we should just stay at our own sides. Yeah. I w- <laughs> Rather than take the risk. I'd go around. I'd go up the street before I crossed uh, Sumner Avenue on a bicycle. Yeah, I, I would think. never. I would never do that. But I'd, it's like... You know, I mean, again, everyone's treating rotaries like they're the, like the the, the resolution and the the savior of every possible traffic problem, and I'm not entirely sure that's true. No, it's not. Uh, that's it's like, like, you know, we're, like for example, they're adding one in my hometown of Rehoboth. Yeah. Okay, so it's you know Route 44 and where uh you know, Route 118 intersect in Rehoboth. It it's it's got a gas station. It's got a, a Cumberland Farms and a Dunkin' Donuts. That's that's the big, that's like the center of town. And someone decided, even though there's been a light there forever, uh, we need a rotary there because it's the only thing that's going to satisfy the 9,000 people that live in that town. Well, I mean, it kind of does alleviate the traffic because it's now like a feeder line kind of thing. Like you're waiting to go as opposed to waiting two minutes at a time for a traffic light and traffic backs up more than a half a mile and you can't like even when you get in line for traffic at the end it's going to take like three or four light cycles for you to even reach that kind of thing yeah but what i'm telling you is that's the kind of place where (sighs) the lights were doing fine man you didn't need a you didn't need a rotary there and you know the, the 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 x is confusing you know, when you can take a, a left-hand turn or you know, whatever. It yeah. all depends on, I don't know. I just, I don't, I don't know if there's a, I'd like to see bridges. Like, you know, like bridges over the X. That's what I'd like to see. That's impossible. Ramps. You're I'd like to see ramps. Ram- like what? Evil Knievel style what ramps. Tum- tunnels. You know how I am about the tunnels. You love tunnels. I like a good tunnel. You could have a, you could have a tunnel that goes from uh, the CVS uh, to the. Uh, to the, the X pub. No, what's that new restaurant that replaced the s- typical Sicilian? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, um, is it mojitos, something like that. Yeah, but yeah, you could have a you could have a tunnel right there. I like a tunnel that goes from the, the CVS to yeah. the the yeah. X Pub. That, that would really that would, that would really uh, help me. A pedestrian tunnel. Yes, of course. What could possibly go wrong? Not listen. A, a tunnel with no uh, supervision by anybody. Would be perfectly safe for the X in Springfield. I see absolutely no problems developing with that kind of plan. Ooh, ooh, piece of drugs. Ooh, ooh piece of drugs. Oh, what, a, what a great place to socialize down here. Oh, this is great. Dim, Hanging out. Dim lighting. Uh, you know. Shelter from the rain. <laughs> Sleeping bags. It's 659 a Rock 102. Rock 102. And now, Bax's View from the Couch. Brought to you by Rocky's Ace Hardware, Outdoor Power Headquarters, Steel, Ego, Craftsman, and Aaron's. Hey, good morning, sports fans. How the heck are you? Folks, as you know, I'm a big fan of sports collectibles. From my officially licensed set of Cedric Maxwell socket wrenches, to my Rick Roby oven mitts, to my commemorative Dave Cowan set of salad bowls, I'm crazy about that stuff. Of course... I own some stupid stuff, too, but that's hardly the point. Right now, I'm all in on focused on where things stand with a Shohei Otani 50-50 baseball, the very ball in which Shohei Otani of the Dodgers became the first player in history 
to accumulate 50 home runs and 50 stolen bases in a single season. Yesterday, an agreement was made to sell the ball at auction, despite the two current lawsuits disputing the ownership of the ball. The auction is already underway with top bids going as high as $1.8 million. The dispute of ownership came in question when 18-year-old Max Mattis filed a lawsuit last month claiming the ball was stripped from his possession. He had been seeking a temporary injunction to stop the auction. That injunction was denied by a judge who then scheduled a hearing that had been set for this Thursday. Meanwhile, a second fan, Joseph Davidoff, filed a lawsuit of his own claiming that he was the rightful owner of the ball. Yesterday, an agreement was reached in which both sides agreed to allow Golden Auctions to resume the bidding, although no clear owner has yet been determined. Folks, I gotta tell you, I never had these kinds of problems when I got those Rick Roby oven mitts. The Dave Cowan salad bowls, on the other hand, that was a bit of a problem, but it never had to go to court. In fact, whoever is determined to be the owner of the ball is looking at a pretty big fat payday. So much better than the $300,000 offer that the Dodgers made originally to get that ball in their hands. It's like Slugworth trying to get Charlie Bucket to give up the everlasting gobstopper. Only worse, because this time it's for real. Perhaps the only fair thing to do would be to split the money equally. 50% of $1.8 million is $900,000 apiece. That's $900,000 more than they had a month ago. And I'd be perfectly okay with that. The question is whether these two guys will be okay with that at $900,000 apiece. But hey, enough of my yappings. Sports brought to you by Rocky's Ace Hardware. You know, Rocky's is not a farm, but wait until you see Rocky's pumpkins and mums. Whoever grow these beauties really had a green thumb. Pumpkins and mums. Fall at Decorating Essentials. Get them now at your neighborhood Rocky's Ace Hardware. I'm back. That's my view from the couch. Rock, rock 102 Springfield's Classic Rock. It's 712 and Sammy Hagar with Bax and Nagel and Rock 102. I was thinking about remortgaging my house uh, in order to buy a Tesla Cybertruck. Well, why would you do that? Well, why not? You see how cool they look? Yeah, but kind of so, looks like a toaster on wheels. I saw one driving by the house yesterday. To uh, to talk about it from Consume Reports, it's Mike Quincy. Good morning, Michael. How you doing? Hey, guys. How's it going this morning? It's going. <laughs> it's going very, very well. Hey, um, <laughs> so Consume Reports has uh, done a whole big thing on the, uh, the Tesla Cybertruck. The last time we had you on... We, or the time before that, we talked about it and how, you know, from the untrained eye, from those of us that can't possibly afford a $100,000 truck, it looked a little, how shall I say this, stupid. Um, <laughs> it still looks stupid. Well, you, you're, the, you're the expert in this on this thing, and you guys had a chance to uh, to finally get one. Tell us a little bit about that. Just getting one of these things was, was hard enough, never mind, you know, testing it. Oh, yeah. Now, we, we put our order in uh, a while back, and to, to, to kind of uh, to get one as quickly as we, we could, we had to get what's called the Foundation Series, which is kind of like the way a car maker says, if you want to be the first on your block, it's going to cost you extra. Of course, we paid the extra, and yes, it did come out to $102,000, which is a, a lot more. I mean, the, the Foundation Series, $1,000 price. So, yeah, we, 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 had, to, we had to wait and um and and we had to be patient and when we actually took delivery it was in this kind of dingy warehouse with a line of people waiting to pick up cars there was one guy sitting behind like a card table and uh we signed some papers and then we were just told to go find our vehicle out in the parking lot and it was dirty and it wasn't fully charged and there was no one there to explain how the vehicle worked, which is fine because that's what we do. We figure stuff out here at Consumer Reports. But it was a most unusual buying experience. Now, it says in the article that when you say it took a, a little bit of time to get the, the vehicle, if you, if you went to a dealership now and you wanted a car that uh, there's some supply and demand issues, you may wait six months. This took you five years to get this yeah. thing. Five yeah. years. Yeah, that's, for sure. If you bought some, if I, tr- I don't remember what I bought five minutes ago, never mind what I bought five years ago and right. waiting around well, for delivery, it, I, I would have given up. I mean, and, and just, just last week, uh, I took delivery of Consumer Reports uh, test model. We, we bought a, a Chevrolet Silverado EV for about $94,000. And I, and I, I, that, that was an, the vehicle was announced during COVID, and uh, the guy that coordinates the vehicle's fleet for Consumer Reports asked me to buy it, and, and I, had, I put down a $100 uh, reservation, 
and that was in like 2021, I think. Oh <laughs> so God. yeah, there, there were there were issues of of getting all the right parts, all the right you know uh, microchips to to run everything, and then we finally took delivery. And and you know this is this is what Consumer Reports does for our uh, loyal and faithful audience. Now what uh, what is the, uh, the the flux capacitor look like inside of this <laughs> thing? <laughs> well, it's it's just like uh, about every other Tesla that we have tested in that it's dominated by just a center screen. And the center screen is where you go to do basically everything. To 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 turn on the lights, to adjust the seats, to adjust the vents uh for your air conditioning system. Um, it, it is super distracting. We're not big fans of it, um, but it, it, it just that, along with a whole bunch of other things, it's almost like you have to relearn how to drive a car when you get into the cyber truck. Now, the, some of the article says the steering, uh, you're having troubles with the steering on like narrow roads and whatnot. Is that... Uh... Right. The, the, the steering ratio is really weird. Uh, and by that, I mean, first of all, the... the, the the uh, the steering wheel is oblong. It's like a yoke, and um, you you move it just a little bit to the right or a little bit to the left, and the tires turn a lot farther than you think. So it doesn't take much steering input to 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 make the the truck turn. It also has a rear wheel steering system built in as well. So you can do a, a very tight radius turn, but but by 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 the, when I say you have to kind of relearn how to drive because. This, you only turn the wheel maybe 180 degrees to get full lock, which is ridiculous. So when you're like backing it up or when you're maneuvering through a, a narrow passage, especially backing up in between cars, it's super nerve-wracking because it's hard to tell exactly how much steering input you need to give it, and there's no backup sensors. There's cameras everywhere. What? But we like we like the systems that 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 like beep at you when you're getting close to an object yeah. to give you an idea of when you should stop. So so it 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 requires a whole lot of a, a new consciousness when it comes to piloting this thing. Why would it not have backup sensors on it to tell you you're going to hit something? I, I don't know. Why doesn't it have a turn signal stock? I mean, the, the turn signals are built into the steering wheel hub. There's little buttons uh, on, the, on the left side of the hub, you know, with, with a left arrow and a right arrow. And you have to, I, have to, I have to look down every time I use it to hit the button to, to, to use my turn signal. I, I, Tesla wants to do stuff that is different, and, well, they've succeeded. So Steve has a truck. I have a truck. I'm very happy with my truck, and it's got all those things that you're talking about. So you have like, you know, if uh, you know if if something's in the blind spot, it's going to let me know. Hey, something's in the blind spot. When people buy a truck, it's mostly because of the utility that happens when you buy a truck. So you can do a lot of things with a whole lot of things, you know, tow stuff, that kind of stuff. With the cyber truck, I imagine it is designed to do those things but to buy one is not about utility it's really about telling the word uh, of the world i'm a douchebag with too much money to spend <laughs> that's i mean it's very funny and i would say you're you're, you're sort of not wrong i mean the truck it actually does have some function the, the bed is is um a bit longer than the EV trucks from Chevrolet and and Ford, the Ford F-150 Lightning, the Chevrolet Silverado. It also has a built-in tonneau cover, which um, you can kind of make it more or less weather tight, and and it, anything you have in the bed is is not uh, viewable from the outside. And like your Honda Ridgeline, there is actually a little trunk within the bed to put stuff in as well. So there is some functionality, um, but we haven't fully tested uh, everything that the bed can hold. We haven't towed with it yet, although we will, but we know that, that electric vehicles, electric trucks, if you're, if you're towing, your, your driving range goes way down. Uh, when you have weight in the bed, your driving range goes way down. In the cold weather, your, your driving range goes down as well. So, so you, to, to buy an electric truck thinking you're going to get the utility that you get with a gas or diesel truck, it, it, you're right, Bax. It, 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 you're kind of just more making a statement than you're, you're buying a truck that does all the truck stuff. Well, I mean, that's, you know, to me, that's the whole thing. That's the whole purpose of, of buying a truck is, you know, it, 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 does, it, it allows you to do things that's like certain SUVs would not allow you to do. And that's part of the reason why 
I got my truck, and I'm sure it's one of the reasons why Steve got his. It just seem it just seems to me that I I mean I can't imagine how anyone's going to take this thing off road. I can't imagine how anyone's going to try to you know you know pull a trailer furniture with it. I mean I, I just I don't I don't see how any of that stuff would be done by the average person who bought one of these things. But you, you you'd, you'd pull a, a, a trailer with furniture from East Long Meadow to Springfield. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, um, <laughs> the hell I would. <laughs> You, you won't you won't do long long distances, um, but I mean if if you are are running a car company, and you know Tesla is still relatively new. I mean they've been in business like twenty years, something like that. But but the the the, the biggest body style uh, of vehicle sold in the United States is a truck, right? So why why wouldn't you with your you know brand name? get into the pickup truck business. I mean, it's, it's, it's what you know, more people are buying pickup trucks and sedans. So, so that's kind of like the business case to, to go into it. Um, but, you know, whether or not this succeeds, whether or not uh, electric trucks get any kind of traction in the marketplace is yet to be seen. So a, a couple of years ago, you guys uh, rated an, another Tesla. I forgot which model it was, but it was like the highest testing vehicle that – Consumer Reports had ever tested, and you raved. The, the, the Model S. The Model S, yes. And and you raved about it. And and now you're seeing you know a lot more Teslas on the road since since that happened, and that, that car was out there. And then they come up with this, the Cybertruck. In, in your view, is, is, is Tesla kind of lost sight of what they could have become, or is this... Or, or, or are they on target? Are they, are they staying you know true to that kind of uh you know that kind of promise because it seems to me they're, they're losing sight of what makes a te- what made Tesla interesting to begin with well Tesla is uh in terms of electric vehicle sales nobody sells more EVs than Tesla that so that's that's a hard you know earned um feat for for the you know for for moving product um Tesla has branched out i mean they they had we talked about the model s but they also have the Model X, which is sort of their <clears throat> their Goldwing SUV thing. There's the Model Three and the Model Y, and 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 these have all been tested by Consumer Reports. We've gotten good reliability data. Um, there's some hits and misses in terms of reliability. The Model X and Model Y are less reliable than than the average new car. The Model Three and Model Y have average predicted reliability, which isn't bad. So Tesla is always looking to kind of redefine what performance is now. Consumer Reports hasn't fully tested the Tesla Cybertruck yet. We'll have test results uh, probably in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a month or so. But, it, you know, just by the seat of our pants, forgive the pun, but yeah, these, these vehicles are, are super fast. They have agile handling. They, they look like nothing else out on the road. Um, but but you know, the, the idea, though, that, that Tesla often talked about an affordable uh, EV, and that certainly has not been the case. The the the, the Cybertruck is a lot more money than they they initially said it was going to be. So um, I, I don't know. I, I think I think car companies in general have uh, a tough time selling EVs because they cost a lot to produce and to make any kind of money. You have to charge a lot. So it it, it it's um it, it's not it's not not every car maker is fully embracing um, selling EVs to mainstream consumers. Mike, did you see the video going around of the Cybertruck trying to pull an F-150 out of the mud and the whole back end <laughs> of the Cybertruck just rips right off? Uh, there are a lot yeah. of Cybertruck videos. Like, why, why, like, that would be a number one reason for me to not to buy one, not only because they look dumb and they cost $100,000, <laughs> but the idea that it, a $100,000 vehicle couldn't pull another vehicle that is supposed to be, you know, comparable. I don't think, I don't think you can pull a smart car out of a, out of a puddle. <laughs> it's funny you said smart car, and and, yeah. and there there have been um, various vehicles that I've driven home uh, over the like twenty something years that I've worked at the Consumer Reports test track. The smart car was one of the ones that people got, you know, like. like came out of their house when I drove into the neighborhoods. They wanted to come talk about it. Um, the Viper was the other one. But the Cybertruck, whenever you drive this, people are going to give you a thumbs up. They're going to give you the middle finger. Yeah. They're going to, uh, they're going to like, like salute you and then yeah. also give you the sign that they're about to throw up their I, mouth. I was going to yeah. ask, does that body protect you from insults being <laughs> hurled at you? <laughs> 
not 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 quite. So I mean, the first time I drove it, I was I didn't know what to think, but I know a number of my colleagues have have. I mean, they've they've, they've taken the Cybertruck to Costco, and as they're as they're walking out with their cart full of stuff, they see people gathered around the truck. Yeah. And one of my colleagues just said, "Just hid behind another car before the so the crowd would dissipate," just because they, they he didn't want to get ridiculed, or he didn't want to stand there for for a, a half an hour answering questions. If you don't like attention. Don't get a Cybertruck. If you want attention wherever you go, get a Cybertruck. It's, it's a soundproof vehicle, which is great because you can just see the people mouthing the word <laughs> douchebag as you drive by them. <laughs> I think he said douchebag. Uh, fair, fair to say it's polarizing. Right? Yeah, very much so. You can check out uh, the car blog and go to consumerreports.org to find out more information. Mike Quincy, great to talk to you. Thanks so much for having me on, guys. Thanks. You bet. 726 on Rock 102. 734. With Bax and Nagel on Rock 102, it's time for news. Here's local radio icon Steve Nagel. Thanks, Bax. Uh, not even two weeks after Hurricane Helene swamped the Florida coastline, Milton has strengthened rapidly into a major hurricane on a path towards the state. The system is threatening the densely populated Tampa metro area, which has a population of more than 3.3 million people with a potential direct hit and menacing the same stretch of coastline that was battered by Helene. Traffic was thick on I-75 North Monday as evacuees fled in advance of Hurricane Milton. Crews are also hurrying to clear the uh, debris left by Helene. According to the National Hurricane Center uh, tracker, Milton will make landfall on the west coast of Florida late tomorrow. It's expected to be a Category 3 storm, which have winds of 111 to 129 miles an hour when it hits the shore in the Tampa Bay region, which has not endured a head-on hit by a major hurricane in more than a century. 1921 was uh, was the hurricane that came through Tampa the last time, like wow. a direct hit on the city. It could retain hurricane strength as it churns across central Florida towards the Atlantic Ocean. That track would largely spare other states ravaged by Helene, which has already killed at least 230 people on its path from Florida to the Carolinas. Milton intensified quickly over the eastern Gulf of Mexico. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis told reporters on Monday afternoon that the hurricane was far stronger than what was predicted two days ago. It was a Category 5 with a maximum winds of 180 miles an hour and was centered about 675 miles southwest of Tampa as of late Monday afternoon. Man. Damn. Uh, and they, they're saying the damage, uh, their entire Gulf Coast of Florida is especially vulnerable to storm surge. Uh, Helene came ashore some 150 miles away from Tampa in the Florida Panhandle and still managed to cause drowning deaths in the Tampa area due to surges of around five to eight feet. Again, I saw this guy, uh, the storm surge is already happening, you know, right. and he's in his house with the lights all on. And he has other videos on his TikTok page of like the last time when Helene came through and how he had to cut all the drywall off and kind of redo uh, most of the house. And he right. goes, Maybe I should have went a little higher because, you know, with the re- replacing the drywall because most of it got flooded by Helene. Uh, and this one's going to be even higher. You're talking about six or seven feet higher than what the storm surge was from Helene. That's crazy. You know, um, I know there are there are parts of like the coastline that got, you know, evacuation routes and all that. And I'm and, and looking at the evacuation uh, situation as it is right now in Tampa. <clears throat> and it just I mean, the 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 volume of people that are trying to, you know, get inland and to, to protect yeah. themselves and their families. I mean, it just it's just amazing to me that uh you know, this is the way we operate this kind of stuff, but I mean you gotta get out of there. Yeah. You can't stay. You're if you're if I mean you're you I mean you're 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 asking to get hurt or killed or you know, by by sticking around. I mean you got to get out and just and watching these lines. People just you're just trying to get yeah. gasoline and ga- you know gas stations are running out of gas. Yeah. Well, I mean they couldn't get deliveries from Helene. Yeah, I know. So, so I mean they're already you know, they're already choking on the last storm. Uh, if you want to, you know, with all the stuff, there's also the stuff going on in North Carolina from Helene too. And if you want to yeah. donate to that with a uh, a credible source, you can go to rock102.com. We have a link to the United Way out of. Asheville and uh, Buncombe County down there in uh, in North Carolina. So at least you know your money's going to go somewhere. Uh, you know, it's not just somebody's GoFundMe account that says they're helping out hurricane victims. Yeah, it's actually, it's been vetted. We can tell you for sure that this is the right place to go. Uh, the New York City Council passed a bill that would put rats on birth control. 
I got a buddy. <laughs> According to the bill, a local rat contraceptive pilot program will begin in a small section of the city using ContraPest, a contraceptive for both male and female rats approved by the EPA. All right, let me ask you this. Yeah. Now, how do these rats get those little rat condoms on their junk with such little hands so so far away from all the business? Oh, well, they just use a rubber glove. They don't, there's no... They even you know, need like a, like one of them, like uh, those sock grabbers that the elderly have. You're going to have to. I mean, look at the their little the, their little hands can't touch their business. The measure it, is... It's virtually impossible to put on a, a condom on a rat. Well, the female's responsible anyway. Oh, you know what? That, yeah. is, that is absolutely not true. That should be a shared sure, responsibility sure. between male and female rats. You, uh, you don't think there's rats out there that uh, do their business and say, I'm going out for cigarettes. I'll be right back and then never come back. I'm all. sure that is, but does that make it right? Uh, no, it doesn't make it right, but I'm just saying that's usually what happens. She didn't want to take a plan B. You know, it is it is time for male rats to take some sort of responsibility for their own for their own uh, for their own physiology, their own responsibility. It's the, more than time. The uh, measure is aimed at helping save wildlife and is inspired by the city's beloved uh, Flacco the owl, who died earlier this year with rat poison in his system. See, that's the that's the problem when you poison. If you poison wildlife, something else is going to eat it, and then they get poisoned, and it starts causing an environmental catastrophe, which you don't want. No. Oh. I suppose, but then again, you don't have a rat problem, do you? No, I, I guess not. Rita McMahon, the director of Wild Bird Fund, says many birds in New York suffer from rat poisoning. McMahon told CBS New York that the uh, Department of Environmental Conservation did necropsies on red-tailed hawks and other raptors and found that 80% of the birds had died from rat poison. McMahon said raptors uh, help control the rat population and the rat contraceptive pilot program will help save the birds that eat the rats. Yeah, and then their hormones are going to get all thrown off. Mm-hmm. Oh, I mean, this is, uh, I mean you, 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 what, you know, what's the best uh, the best option, though? Let's say you've got an infestation. Rats, mice, whatever it is. Yeah. You know, I mean, that, that decon works terrific. But if you don't want to use that, then you, what, are you going to use a glue trap? Going to use one of them snap traps? You know, it's all cruelty. But yet, I don't want infestation. I don't want them in my house. No, making babies. Yes. Left and right. This get, ain't yeah, this ain't the bang bus. You gotta get out of this car. That's right. Yeah. I don't wanna see that kind of thing in my house. You think they like blindfold a rat and drive it around in a car and then uh, you know, they think they're gonna get uh, mm-hmm. uh, you know, another rat, but then they take the blindfold off and, and they find actually, it's not exactly what they thought it was it, gonna be. It's a raptor. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Whoa, 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 whoa. I totally felt like you were a rat. Yeah, I mean, in that situation, who can you trust? Uh, let's see. Uh, down in Coventry, Connecticut, a dozen a discovery of dozens of cats on a property in Coventry led to the arrest of a man. Police say they charged Derek Van Doren with cruelty to animals. Van Doren was arrested on Thursday following an investigation on Carpenter Road. The investigation began after the community service officer received information of an abundance of cats at Van Doren's home. Uh, it was discovered that more than 30 felines were living on the property and were in various conditions. 30? Yeah. Are you telling me there's an emaciated pussy cat on that property? There's wall-to-wall pussy cats in that house. With the help of a good Samaritan, police said the cats were captured, removed from the property, evaluated and treated by a veterinarian. Van Doren was released on a non-surety bond and said to appear in court uh, tomorrow. So, 30 cats. That's a lot of He's cats. He's a crazy man. cat dude. You may you, you have to change the box every 15 seconds. That's uh yeah, that's probably one of the most gross smelling homes. Oh my god. I yes. knew somebody with two cats in their entire house like stunk of cat I am, urine. Listen, I like cats, don't get me wrong, but having had cats in the past and yeah. having you know a box to clean I'm I'm all good with cats for a good long time. Every now and then my wife says, "Should we get a cat?" Uh, and my first thought is, no, I, I, I can't. I no. Yeah. I don't want to do it. I'd much rather have that that refreshing dog scent in the house than I'd rather have than than cats. A cat box. Yeah, the dog scent is bad enough. Yeah. Right. You know. 
Like, you know, like you go you leave your home for a few hours and then come back and he hit you in the face. You're like, wow, this house really smells like a dog lives here. Yeah, you don't notice it if you've been in it for a while, but right. like you walk in and out, you're absolutely right. It hits you like in a like a face, like a two by four sometimes. Ab- absolutely gross. Mm, my kid wants a cat. There's no way we're getting a cat. No, no way. No way. No way. You ever own a cat? No, and you ever, I don't you ever want change to change your cat box. No, I go visit other people who have cats, and then uh, I enjoy the cat for <sighs> a little while, and then I leave. Again, I like cats, but I I don't like the box. It's like it's like people who it's not that they hate children; they just don't want somebody with children, right? And then you can leave at the end of the day. Exactly. You know, that's that's the kind of thing I don't want to. I, Pose a cat roaming around my house. Oh, no, of course you would. Four hours a day. Because you're a reasonable human being. Stinking the place up. Oh, and a, it does. I already got a dog who gets into the trash all the time. What do you think the cat's going to do? Cat doesn't care. Cat do whatever a cat wants to do. And that's the problem. You can't that's train a cat. That's why I don't want a cat. Your uh, cats are jerks. Sometimes they are, Steve. Uh, your Pioneer Valley forecast today mixes sun and clouds with a high of 67. Tomorrow, more of the same with a high of 64. It's 41 right now in downtown Springfield. I'm Steve Nagel, and that's the news on Rock 102. Oh, yeah. With fall savings. Rock 102, Springfield's classic rock. It's 752 in heart with Bax and Nagel on Rock 102. Mixes sun and clouds with a high of 67. Tomorrow, more of the same with a high of 64. It's 41 right now in downtown Springfield. So uh, next hour, we're going to give you the keyword to cash, your chance to win 1000 bucks. You'll hear that uh, another keyword, different keywords throughout the day, 8 o'clock, 11, 2, and 5. When you hear the keyword at Rock 102, you want to enter the keyword at rock102.com before midnight for your chance to win. It's all brought to you by Dave Miner Exterior Home Improvements, Aqua Pump, and Rock 102 Springfield's Classic Rock. Uh, uh, just to follow up on a on a phone call, a guy who called in from a pest control uh, place. Yeah, he, he said that uh, you know most of these people, most of these birds that are dying of the rat poison, mm-hmm. it's it's put out by people like you and me, uh, like the stuff you buy in the in the store. Right. Uh, it's not the stuff that is being used by the uh, by the pest control people. No, so the just, professionals know what they're doing. I- idiots like us, you know, we'd kind of doing it like kind of, you know, ham handed way of yeah. getting rid of pests and inf- infestation. Well, I, I got uh, I, I use this place out of uh, Southwick, this environment first place, mm-hmm. and it's like because I have pets, I don't want my pets, uh, you know, getting a hold of something. And uh, whatever they do, I, I, yeah, you obviously take their word for it. I, I'm not a chemist. I don't know what's yeah. what's going in this stuff, but uh, supposedly it's safe. I, I don't yeah, know. They, just, they say it's safe. Uh, you know, who am I to? Who are you or I mean to, to uh, right, deny them? Right. So uh, you know, I, I, I probably believe the guy that, that it's probably us. You know, putting out the bad poison. I, I you know, I've heard the stories that if you had use certain poisons, that you know, it is bad for. Not only the animal ta- you know, eating it, but also the animal that eats that animal. And uh, listen, uh, I know some people got a problem with that, but as long as it's not in my house, I don't care as much. Right. I'm getting Does that right. make me insensitive? No, it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't make you insensitive. It just makes me all. a good homeowner. Homeowner says what? What? Oh, oh man, you fell for it. I don't know why I do that. Um, I'm getting my uh, my septic pumped. <laughs> that means two things. Yes, it does. You, you are, huh? That's time. First time. Well, it's first. I've I've never, I've never personally had a septic tank. I've only lived in a home when I was a kid that Wait had a, a septic tank. What? How long have you been living in that house? Uh, it's about it's four years, four four and a half years now. So it's about four time. years. Yeah. It's probably you busted at the seams. I mean, come on, four I was years. Recommended every uh, three to five years. Dude, I mean, I, I don't know how it is at your house, yeah. but I know with my house, I can fill that up in about six months. But what size is your tank? I think that's a little personal, no, don't you? No, it has to do with the, is it a two-bedroom septic or a four-bedroom septic? Is, it is a two-bedroom septic. Okay, well, I got a bigger one. Okay. My tank's right. bigger than you. My t- my caboose can hold more. Well, you know, Steve, yeah. it isn't always about size, is it? I'm, I'm interested to see how this process works. I'm probably going to have to wear a mask. It's No, actually, you, you well, you're not the one doing it, right? You, you're having a man with the... No, but I'm going to watch him do it. You know, you watch from afar. You know, he doesn't want to be bothered. He doesn't want someone, you know, looking over his shoulder. This guy's got a truck that says, we deliver milk on the weekends. <laughs> well, you got to repurpose the truck somehow. Yeah, you know, I you gotta, can't do that. It's, a, you know, it's, it's fascinating. I mean, you know, he'll... he'll 
you lift the cover. Yeah, I've never seen I've never seen it done before. He'll lift the cover. He'll take the big giant uh, hose, yeah. and it'll just um, yeah, just do what the uh, pull it right out of there. Pull hauls it all out. Uh, they're number one in the number two business. Uh, see, that's absolutely absolutely true. Business is always crappy, and that's the way they like it. Uh, I like this one because a flush is better than a full house. That's true. You know what I'm saying? That, that is that's, so that's some true. some good marketing right there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, your tank can only handle so much. So, yeah, that's get, what, get your tank cleaned. That's what she said. It's 756. Nate Costa from the Springfield Thunderbirds coming up in just a few minutes in Rock 102. And now, Bax's View from the Couch. Brought to you by Rocky's Ace Hardware, Outdoor Power Headquarters, Steel, Ego, Craftsman, and Aaron's. Hey, good morning, sports fans. How the heck are you? Folks, as you know, the Patriots played a terrible game on Sunday against the Miami Dolphins. A lot of reasons for this, of course. Dumb rules, bad play calling, penalties, and oh yeah, they played like straight up garbage. It almost makes you wonder whether things would have been any different had a player like, oh, I don't know, team captain safety Jabril Peppers been on the field on Sunday. Sadly, he was not. Why? Because Jabril Peppers was far too busy getting arrested for acting like a jacked up psychopath instead. On Saturday, police in Braintree arrested Peppers for, among other things, assault and battery, assault with a deadly weapon, strangulation, and possession of a Class B substance, which is believed to be cocaine. Peppers, who turned 29 on Friday, was taken into custody after allegedly striking the woman up to six times, tearing off her clothes, putting her off si- out- outside. The details from this point forward only get worse, the least of which was a clear plastic bag filled with a powdery substance later tested positive for cocaine. Yesterday, Jabril Peppers was arraigned in Quincy District Court, pled not guilty, then posted bail of 2500 bucks and walked away. Meanwhile, the Patriots released a statement acknowledging that they were aware of the situation but would not make any further comments. So let me try. Folks, I don't care who the hell you are, what position you play for in the New England Patriots or anywhere else for that matter, if this is the sort of behavior that you typically resort to, if abuse is your primary response to solving anything, you should not be allowed to enjoy the privilege of playing in the NFL. Because you see, there are no justifiable reasons to choke somebody because you're not enjoying your birthday weekend. Listen, I know the man is a three-year, $24 million contract, but if I were the Patriots right now, I'd be busy finding ways to get out of that. The Patriots have enough problems. Paying an abusive idiot $8 million a year should not be one of them. But hey, never mind yapping. Sports brought to you by Rockies Ace Hardware. Allen is the veteran steel train technician at the Westfield Rockies. Now, Allen has a, a, an apprentice. His name is Nate, and Nate knows his stuff too. Your steel chainsaw or backpack blower, don't replace it, repair it. There's a steel train technician at every Rocky's Ace Hardware location. I'm back, so that's my view from the couch. Rock 102. Rock 102, Springfield's Classic Rock. It's 810 and Guns and Roses with Bax and Nagel and Rock 102. Mix of sun and clouds today with a high of 67. Tomorrow, more of the same with a high of 64. It's 41 right now in downtown Springfield. Before we get a chance to even talk to, uh, to Nate Cost from the Thunderbirds. I need to tell you that the key word to cash for this hour is the word age. That's age, as in A-G-E. For those of you who never actually spelt it out, that's how it oh, is spelled. Uh, I'll use it in a sentence. Uh, age is today's uh, key word to cash. There you go. And uh, if you enter into Rock 102 before midnight, you could win a 1000 bucks. Good luck to you. Again, the word is Age. Well, I also have the uh, catchphrase to disappointment, and that is empty-handed, which is what Nate Costa <laughs> is this morning. Good morning, Nate. Good morning, boys. Yeah, I didn't bring well, the Judy Matt spread with me. I'm yeah, sorry. Where's, yeah, where's, where's our muffin top? So where's what, our what, uh, donuts? What a uh, delight to on. see you here with nothing to offer. <laughs> uh, I wanted to be on time, but... Well, you know, yeah. um, well, first of all, a couple of things. It's good to see you. Good to uh, see you guys. Uh, last week, you, may, you guys made the announcement that uh, the affiliation with the St. Louis Blues extends to 2031, which is amazing. So uh, you know what else is happening in 2031? I'm retiring in 2031. That's uh, that's. So you have to have a dual countdown here. Yeah. Uh, you know what? Uh, wouldn't it be great to have a Bax night at, uh, at the Springfield Thunderbirds game? Yeah, in sure. 2031. Yeah. 2030. We'll have time. Plan we'll, it now. Yeah, all right. Let's get it going. Let's good. get yeah. let's get let's let's make a retirement party at the at a, at a Thunderbirds game. We can absolutely do that. Um, sure. Yeah. yeah. Why not? Yeah. Right. yeah. 
Anyway, well, tell us about the affiliation about this news. Yeah, it, I mean, we we uh, we wanted mm. some long term certainty, obviously, and uh, you know, we we had a five year deal with the Blues, and you know, obviously, we started that right when COVID happened. So, trying to figure that up, we essentially ripped up the last contract, and we did a seven year deal um, with those guys. Just really good long term certainty for us in Springfield, and. Um, it's great for the downtown community and, and uh, you know, a great partner. The St. Louis Blues have been good to us. Obviously, we had the finals run two years ago, made the playoffs the year before. So not not so fortunate last year, but the team's looking good this year. And they've been a great partner, really, at the end of the day. They, they care about winning and they care about development in a winning environment. And that's what we want to hear at this level. So I think the thing that's, that's really good about it, it and, and not every AHL team has this advantage where they can count on the affiliation season to season. Sometimes these affiliations change and switch, and it makes it difficult for teams to have any kind of you know continuity uh, season by season. So every year it may be different players or different coaches or whatever. But here now you have the the chance to really establish you know, or continue to establish what you've built here, which I think is really really great news. Yeah, and obviously you'd like to have a, a closer affiliate, um, but they've been such good partners, and I mean they're the partner that we've got, right? Um, unfortunately, the the landscape hasn't changed much over the last few years, so it's been you know it's it's actually been a, a really good thing for us to lock down somebody for a long term. I'm sure you might have seen what went on with Chicago and Carolina last year, and kind of battling in Chicago going independent, something that we really wanted nothing to do with. I mean, right. All the value in what we do is the NHL partner and the NHL players and the future stars that are coming from them to to Springfield. So um, that's what we cared about, and and they've continued to invest in that. So we're excited about the group that they have coming this year. It should be a really good year. Now you get to opening opening day on Saturday. Yes, yeah, so we're opening up on Saturday, opening night, doing uh, what we what we do best. So blowing it out at MGM from four to six with fever and. Uh, you know, music and and uh, beer and food and 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 uh, food trucks and then come on over to the rink. Everyone will get a rally towel and we're gonna be doing what we normally do. So blowing it out to welcome everybody back. And then we've got kids opening day today. So yeah. if, if you want to get them, get them today. So um, tell us a little bit about the team. Is this? I mean, how many how many returning players do you have? How many new faces are we looking at? I mean, it's a really good mix. Um, so for those of you that have come out to our games, you know, Matthew Peck, our captain, will be back. Uh, Hugh McGing, Drew Callen, uh, Mackenzie McEachern. We just got Tyler Tucker back. So some really familiar names um, that have played some serious minutes up in St. Louis too. So it's you know it's a really good thing for us to have some of these guys to help with the new the new young guys. Um, and there's a really good cr- uh, crop of young players. So the Blues are uh, retooling and they've had some really good draft picks. So we've got uh, mm-hmm. Dalibor Dvorsky coming out, who's one of their top picks. Um, Zach Bullduke and, and Zach Dean, who are two of the, their guys that played up at the end of last year, so they'll be with us for a little bit at least. And um, you know, it's 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 a good you know you know how things can go, right? You know, things can change very quickly. Um, sure. But there's a lot of excitement. Yesterday we got some some players too. So um, looking forward to Saturday. So it, Nate Costa from the uh, the Springfield Thunderbirds is in the studio. Um, you know, we've, we've talked about, we're talking, you know, off the air about, you know, the way things are downtown right now. It's a little chopped up between, you know, court square and the, uh, the, the parking garage is not yet complete. You're, you were saying that people should be parking at MGM, probably the best option for most people. But, uh, once those things do open up and once we're looking down the road at what is possible for the Thunderbirds downtown heading forward. It's a really exciting, I mean, you're like right right on the edge of something really exciting finally happening downtown. Tell me a little bit about about the plan for that and and how you guys are looking to take advantage of it. Yeah, you know, unfortunately, we don't have a ton of control on what's going on. And I think that's a misconception that some of our fans have is that it's our project. I think we were, you know, obviously viable enough to get this project going. The the uh, parking garage needed to get knocked down. You right. guys know that. Um, Thirty so, years ago, yeah, of course. Well, it would have done it by itself eventually. <laughs> Just <laughs> needed to move one of those posts, and the whole thing would have came. Right. Demolition down, was but. the easiest thing in the world. It was kind of like a big giant Jenga. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But I mean, the structure is up. If you come down, you can see it, and there's there's tangible movement. It's just. 
taken a little bit longer than I think all of us would have liked to have happened. Um, I think the cool part about it is that the the plan for this is not just a parking structure. They're going to have some uh, outdoor activ- activation, so they're going to have a green space out there that you can do food trucks and you can have you know bands and that kind of thing. So it'll be really good to be able to activate that, sort of like a, a mini Yawkey Way type thing. And then right across the street, the city's uh, you know working on court the Court Square Park there with 31 Elm. So that whole project coming to completion here, you know, over the next few months, along with a parking garage, it's going to be a, a beautiful downtown. It's just getting there, right? Yeah. I think mm-hmm. that's the the frustrating part on our side is just, you know, we, we, our fans, they've got to give them some credit. They've weathered this thing pretty good, especially some of our, you know, uh, non-mobile people, which is the biggest challenge is trying to find handicapped parking and enough handicapped parking. So, you know, we've been working with the city on trying to accommodate as, as much as we can and Hopefully the, the game night experience is a good one. You know, like you said, MGM has been great with the, utilizing their garage. Like they've been great for us. And a lot of our fans now have, uh, you know, started to just go there naturally. And it's the easiest way to get in. There's an entrance right on state and Maine now right. too that we opened mm-hmm. up. So you can get right into the building right across the street when you do that crossway. So, you know, it's, it's really not terrible right now, but you know, obviously we want to get that garage open as quick as we can. Absolutely. You guys, uh, I've got a lot of great promotions coming up, uh, this, this season, but the one that, uh, you know, we're excited about is november 22nd uh it's a friday night it's going to be against the uh, the, the uh, charlotte checkers it's uh, the mayflower marathon kickoff night and we're going to be there we'll be on the ice we'll be hanging maybe uh, steve will get a second shot at driving the Perhaps. fan bony if you're down I, I mean, all right <laughs> let's make it happen i'll go he, a little easier on the gas pedal yeah you might want to do that because that was all that was almost a, a, you, you a tragedy have a lot, you have a lot of trust in your insurance policy don't you? <laughs> i do well you know you know you're a good guy you can, I can still take care of it but 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 like unlike last uh, the last couple of years where we did the uh, the the marathon game after the mayflower marathon we're doing it before allow more people to go more people to donate probably better for you guys probably right. better for us sleep, overall you know? yeah. yeah we'll be more awake <laughs> That's Absolutely. Sure. Um, yeah, like we were able to get this game and I thought that it would work the best because then we can help pre-promote the event itself. We'll, right. be, we'll be collecting uh, food donations at our games throughout the month of November. So hopefully on that Friday, bring you know bring them down as well. But we're also doing something fun that I thought was unique that we haven't really seen around before. So we'll be giving away an oven mitt that's actually a, a, go- a goalie glove. Um, and it's got the Mayflower Marathon logo on it. So first 3,000 fans will be able to grab one of those. It's a special edition. So I saw the design i think it's very cool it came out pretty yeah, yeah. It came out pretty cool I thought, you know, like, uh, at first i thought oven gloves and then i saw them, like oh yeah, yeah now little, i see it that little, makes total sense goalie mitt, right it's so. really really cool hey next year we should do uh your own hatchets to uh, kill your own turkey uh, what do you think what do you think uh, bags <laughs> and nagel hatchets i don't think you want to yeah. arm the crowd i mean yeah. just, <laughs> where has that ever gone wrong before Maybe a dull blade will be fine <laughs> yeah. you know? right. but the uh, so the, the, we have that night which is which is great and we always appreciate you, you helping us out out with that it's, it's such a, a huge community event and uh, for you guys to be a part of it is is it helps us out tremendously but you, you have other things going on at the games these full season memberships i was looking into these that's what what is the never a wasted ticket program so essentially if you miss a game you can exchange out your ticket for any other game moving forward as long as there's inventory so your tickets will never go to waste. You know, you have something pop up on a Saturday, you can exchange those out for tickets for another game. Can't guarantee your seat because you'll have your seat for the other games, but um, it's something we added just to have value for someone yeah. that's buying yeah. a full season ticket. I mean, it's so hard. Everyone's got things going on. You're going to miss a game or two. So while we have some inventory still available, yeah. we're offering that type of benefit. And you get a full jersey if you if you become a full member. Yeah, we right? get special jerseys that just exclusive for members if you're a full member. So uh-huh. you, you can't get that jersey anywhere else. So... Yeah, we've, we've really tried to invest in a lot of what we're doing. You know, we don't have like a huge celebrity this year. We've been working on a few things, but we, we really try to lay, um, you know, either a, a giveaway or a promotion on every single weekend night. So, Well, the Hanson um, brothers are getting a little old. I mean, yeah. you know, they're, 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 they're quite elderly now. Yeah, I can't keep going back to that well, right? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so just out of curiosity, how are you guys doing on, on season ticket sales? So we're up yet again, which is really great. Um, we're up to over 1,600 full season ticket members. Last wow. year, we were at just over 15 so we've had another 100 growth and that's coming off a season where we didn't make the playoffs so the the sales team and the staff has really done a really nice job of getting out and just getting people that are coming out to to buy ticket packages and specifically full season but regardless if you make the playoffs or not you've just you guys designed a 
it, it, that it's such a family friendly yeah. event. Like it's stuff you can bring kids to that and not worry about, you know, people getting out of control or anything like that. It's very family oriented. And I think that's a great thing to, to, to grab these kids when they're young to, to continue them being fans uh, into adulthood and then continue the cycle. Yeah, I mean, if you come kids. to the rink now, I mean, the, the majority of people are young people coming with kids, right? Like yeah. we're, we're doing, we're like a community showcase now, whether yeah. your, your kids are coming out to sing the national anthem or do a dance performance on the ice or, um, you know, those types of things. We're really trying to engage the community and like you said, just make a community event and, and kid friendly at the end of the day. We, we know that there's a hockey game going on, but it's about an event, right? It's about entertainment, and that's what we're really trying to invest in and everything outside of uh, the hockey game. You had, you had mentioned about um, – so last year you didn't, make, you didn't make the playoffs, but what you did do last season was something that Springfield Hockey had I don't think has ever seen before, and that was a stretch of sellout games towards the end of the season. How many games in a row were sellouts? We had 14 in a row at the end. We had 20 overall last year, and – We'll definitely get to 15 in a row here on opening night. That's, I mean, that's, that's amazing when you consider the history of, of, of hockey in Springfield that you know, people have really come to uh, come to accept and, and, and love this team, which is well, so and cool. It's almost like the expectation level has been raised, which is great, obviously, right? But I think people expect a sellout now, which is, which is kind of cool. When you come in before, you get the first one and the first couple, and then it's like, oh, that's a pretty cool feat. But now it becomes something that people expect. And, um, you know, I, I think that's a really good thing. I mean, we've started to get a reputation around the league as a really tough building to play in. I mean, our, our building gets loud. It's a perfect AHL building, yeah. as you guys know. Um, so, you know, at the end of the day, the experience of coming to games has, uh, you know, just everyone's rallying around it. The uh, the season begins with the Springfield Thunderbirds on uh, Saturday. Saturday against, night. Against the Laval Rockets. Absolutely. It's going to be a great night. Yeah, and if you can't get there, Sunday we play as well at 3 o'clock. So, awesome. Uh, awesome. Kids opening day. Thanks for coming in, man. Thanks, Nate Costa, good to see you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. It's 823 with Bax and Nagel on Rock 102. GG92. 5450. That's 413-992-5450. It's 826 of Bax and Nagel. Stop almost, interrupting I, yourself. I don't even know how I did that. That's like <laughs> magic. How do you? How does that happen? I don't know. Uh, you did hear it uh, here first. The uh, the Mayflower Marathon uh, Thunderbirds game is going to be November 22nd. Uh, tickets are on sale for that. If you can help us uh, get ready for the Mayflower Marathon, that is the, uh, the Friday before it all begins at MGM Springfield. Uh, so it's going to be a great event, and we're looking forward to uh, having you help us out again this year. I'm really glad that game is before the marathon. There's something about having done a 52-hour broadcast and then trying to take a nap in a six-hour span of time to come back to downtown Springfield uh, yeah. is always really tough. So I'm, uh, I'm and plus uh, I think uh, I think we'll generate a lot more people on a on a Friday night. Uh, versus a Wednesday. Yeah, that I mean the the, yeah. the night before Thanksgiving is a tough night because people are you know traveling and they're with Preparing families. Preparing food, absolutely. Like peeling the potatoes, stuffing the bird. But uh, that's going to be a great night, and we hope to have you join us. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, there was what? The, oh, somebody just sent on the Route Ten Tire listener line, which I believe is an AI uh, uh, thing. Uh, just really because my birthday is coming up. Oh, that's right. Yeah. It just released for a special birthday. It's deviled eggs, deviled egg lays potato chips. It's it's fake. It's got to be. It's got to be. There's, fake. there's no way that uh, lays would even stoop that low uh, to go to a special flavor of potato chip. You know what the vulgar chef made yesterday? No. What? He took bako bits. He took he took polio string uh, polio string cheese cheese sticks. Yeah. Did an egg wash with it. And then the breading was bako bits, and then deep fried it and made <laughs> thing. And I made the comment of that's not even real bacon. Yeah, right. If I was, didn't realize that was not bacon. No, it's uh, it's, it's like vegetable. It's faking. Yeah, but it's it's like soy or something. It's like it's not even meat. Yeah, because I think if you had it in in a jar, you had like the you'd have to you'd have to add a lot more unhealthy things to it. Yeah. And you, that's not what you want out of your bacon. Now, now the other day I'm at the uh, I'm at the Huntington uh, the town Hun- Huntington Town Fall Fair. Yeah, and uh, the vulgar chef's brother was dishing out. I don't know if it was his, but he was dishing out uh, selling uh, apple crisp with ice cream. A 180 from the brother. Yeah, yeah, like right. he he's actually want to eat. <laughs> And that was delicious. Actually, that's not exactly true. Because when Kyle makes something, sometimes I'll look at it and going, 
and think, say to myself, that actually looks pretty good. I don't know, man. He lost me at the NyQuil Jello shots. All right, well, that's, you know, sometimes he goes a little far, but then yeah. there's other times when he'll have something like, you know, with bacon and nacho cheese on yeah. it. And you're like, oh, I could eat that. I could mess that up. Yeah, yeah, I w- the recipes that he makes, I could make some of that minus some of the ingredients that he uses. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, like like take you know he he sometimes ruins something completely by putting something that doesn't belong on something. Yes, like, but that's that's the part of experimentation. He's like a scientist. Well, he's not a very good scientist. <laughs> He's a good person. He's just not a good scientist. It's 8.30. News is next to Rock 102. Here's your Western. 8.34 with Bax and Nagel on Rock 102. It's time for news brought to you by Aqua Pump, an expert in all water supply systems from the well for the pump and into the house. There's local radio icon Steve Nagel. Thanks, Bax. Florida's Gulf Coast braced Tuesday for the impact of Hurricane Milton's winds and expected massive storm surge, which could bring destruction to areas already reeling from Helene's devastation 12 days ago and still recovering from Ian's wrath two years ago. Ian Ian was a jerk, too. Was it Ian or Ian? It's Ian. Almost the uh, entirety of Florida's west coast was under a hurricane warning early Tuesday as the storm hit, and its 155-mile-an-hour winds crept towards the state at 12 miles an hour, sucking energy from the Gulf of Mexico's warm water. The strongest uh, Atlantic hurricane on record is 1980's Allen, which reached uh, speeds of 190 miles an hour, as it moved through the Gulf, as it moved through the Caribbean and Gulf before striking Texas and Mexico, Milton was downgraded early t- today to a Category Four hurricane, but forecasters say it still poses an extremely serious threat to Florida. It's not always about the wind; it's about the storm surges and the flooding that it's going to cause. Yeah, that's that's the the big thing that the, that they're worried about there. Although I on Mass Live, I never understand it. It, people who put the boards up on their windows, they showed the picture of the guy putting the board up on the window. Yeah. It says, go away, Milton. <laughs> and, yeah, I don't think Milton's going to pay attention. It, but, uh, do you think it's a good idea to taunt the hurricane? I don't think the hurricane uh, can distinguish one uh, house that it's about to destroy from another. You don't think that the hurricane uh, starts, oh, I'm just going to travel through this area, and then he looks over to the side, and he's like, oh. There's another one telling me to stay out of my yard. I'm going over there instead. I don't think hurricanes uh, work like that. I don't think there's enough. There's no actual intelligence uh, in a storm like that. It kind of um, goes on its own. It's all instinctual. There is a there. There's also like two other hurricanes behind this one out in the in the Atlantic. Right. Uh, that's kind of scary, too. Well, like, I mean, have between so the, many in succession, it's been twelve days. So, like uh, since uh, you know Helene to to Milton, so there's there's an H to an M. All those other storms didn't quite rise to the level of of a hurricane. Could have just been, you know, just a you know regular tropical storms. Yeah, it just I'm, didn't hit us. I'm trying to see the maps, the uh, hurricanes in the Atlantic, hurricanes in the Atlantic. There's always that map uh, that they show. Tropical weather. They have the big map that encompasses the entire ocean. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's two more Yeah, behind it. Days away, a week away or so, but still. Like, this is a... This is a and then I, 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 there was an article from May. It says uh, the National Weather Service predicts a higher than normal hurricane season this year. Well, thank you very much for telling us that. That's um, that's news you can use. But it, it's unpredictable. You don't know which way they're going to go. No, of that's, course not. That's that's the thing. So um, I'm, moving, I'm trying to move on to the next story here. Well, go right ahead. Find, oh, I am. Uh, here's a guy. A man has been arrested for possession of a ghost gun on Sunday morning. According to the Springfield Police Department, just after 1230 p.m., officers responded to Worthington Street for a gun call. I mean, a the gun called. Hello, is this the police? Yes, I'm a ghost gun. Yeah. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> 47 year old Jeremy. There he goes, shooting his mouth off yeah, again. Yeah, there he goes. Yeah, can't keep that trap shut. 47 uh, year old Jeremiah Cruz was arrested and now he's facing charges of carrying a firearm without a license and carrying a loaded firearm without a license. Officer says 
Uh, officials said the officer seized more than 270 illegal firearms this year, including 15 g g g ghost guns. <sighs> like, hey, Scoob. Hey, Scoob. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think a Scooby snack is going to help in a situation like this. You don't think so? No, nah, I don't yeah, think so. All right. Uh, but, but it would have worked if it weren't for those meddling kids and that dog. Yes, that's true. Uh, protesters got in the way of a threatened sweep of a homeless encampment in Northampton on Monday following a recent U.S. Supreme Court ruling and action taken by Massachusetts Governor Maura Healey. The city was threatening to sweep them today, meaning evict them, from for- evict them forcefully from their homes, destroy their things, and all the reasons the city have given thus far to justify why they're moving forward with the sweep having been disproven both by organizers and the people who live in the camp, said one protester. Western Mass News spoke with protesters Monday who fought back against the city of Northampton for their planned sweep of a homeless encampment known as Moose Camp, which uh, was allegedly created as a community for those in recovery. The uh, move comes after the U.S. Supreme Court ruled back in June that people sleeping outside are no longer protected from punishment under the Eighth Amendment. Meanwhile, at the state level, the budget signed into law by Healy earlier this year repealed the state's previously guaranteed right to emergency shelter, shelter, citing unprecedented demand. The state now limits individuals and families to a nine-month maximum emergency shelter stay. When I heard uh, the camp that they had been working alongside social services and community members to establish was being threatened by the city, I was really sick because I knew how hard they had worked to build a community here, said another protester. The homeless community they are referring to is located on Cook Avenue, where the old Moose Lodge used to be. Oh, that's why it's called that's Moose, Moose Camp. Camp. Right. I thought there was like, you know, some, uh, hey, you know what? Uh, it's kind of like a home away from home. Uh, yeah. Let's pretend like it's a summer camp. Now, is the, is, is the Moose Lodge no longer at that location in Northampton? Well, it says where the Moose Lodge used, used to, to be, be. so uh, it probably this, has been raised. Because this would be a wonderful time to start, you know, drumming up memberships to the Moose Lodge. Well, I mean, think about the cheapness of alcohol that these folks can get themselves a hold of uh, had they have a, a Moose Lodge right there. You bring up a good point, Steve. It is cost effective. Yeah, you know, and they can go in and roll the dice and mm-hmm. sign the book yep. and maybe play some pull tabs. You know, uh, with football season underway, uh, we got we got some squares to sell. Oh, yeah, we got uh, football squares. Everybody come in. By the way, it's chilly night. Just I, I thought everybody should know. Yep, yeah, uh, bootlace chilly night. <laughs> uh, Western uh. Mass News was told by protesters that Northampton police, as well as city officials, did show up Monday morning, but demonstrators said that since they refused to leave, no action was taken to remove anyone. No one's stuff got touched today, and the timeline for when the eviction will actually happen has not been disclosed, a protester noted. Uh, what's the big deal? I mean, if, if, well, you know, if you don't have anywhere else for these people, these poor people to go. Right. And you can't accommodate the fact that you have th- these many people displaced. <sighs> nobody wants, nobody wants a tent city. You know, we had one here in Springfield many years ago. Nobody wants that. No one wants to see it. But what are you going to do? You're just going to. Doesn't if, they, if you if you force them if you force them out, they're just going to go somewhere else because it's a matter of survival. Wasn't it little Stephen Van Zant who uh, spearheaded the project in the 1980s? I I ain't gonna play Tent City. He did, yeah, and he that, he held to that. Yeah, he said I'm never playing that homeless camp up in Northampton ever again. <laughs> that was like one of those we are the world things, wasn't it? It was um. Yes, it was like I think it's soon after we are the world, or you know, hands across America, hands across America. Oh man, that was an awful one too. Huh? You know, I there were a lot. Like, oh God, there was a bunch of uh, there was a bunch of horrible ones, like a, like a bunch of rock star. Like there was a metal one that was not good. How how um how is it that uh, we don't do that anymore? Because I don't think um records sell the way they used to and that's why doing it doesn't necessarily um get the job done 
Well, I mean, it would be nice. Wouldn't it be nice to see all your uh, your famous stars all in one group of singers? Yeah, it'd be uh, great to see. against stuff? Yeah, it would, it would be great to see, say, like, I don't know, uh, Diddy sing with uh, Kanye and, uh, and and 50 Cent and uh, let's see, who else? Got? Jay-Z. But, but, but not at a Feed the Children event. Yeah, probably not. Right, probably not right. for children's event or yeah. even, you know, for, you know, for like an anti-sex trafficking cause. Uh, are you giving your liver a break this month? No. A new, a new survey. Well, hold on, I wasn't prepared. Oh. Survey said. Neither were we when he said that. A new survey found 10% of Americans plan to participate in sober October this year. <laughs> and another... <laughs> So it's uh, so it's Oktoberfest. Oktoberfest, yes. <laughs> and another recent poll found 38 percent of adults don't drink at all. So if you combine those, almost half the country is not drinking this month. Avoiding uh, booze is a trendy thing to do now, partly because young people aren't as drinking aren't drinking as much. The poll found the number of Americans who are at least curious about a sober lifestyle has doubled since 2020. Yeah, half of Americans aren't drinking, but the other half are picking up the slack. Oh, absolutely. There's more booze to go around for everybody. 40% said yes compared to 20% when the uh, same poll was done four years ago. Yeah, four years ago, we were in the middle of a pandemic. Everybody was drinking. <laughs> we had nothing else to do. Yeah, who's, got, who's out in the shed? I'm, uh, <laughs> What's going on out there? Yeah, that, that, that seems like uh, if everybody's already cutting back, why would you need to do a whole month of that? I don't know. This is a... This is one of them silly ideas everyone thinks is a really good idea, but most people who try it yeah. don't last the whole month. Oh, hey, by the way, somebody said maybe they can camp on your lawn, Bax. I'm not saying they can't camp on my lawn. I'm just saying that cities and towns don't want these things to happen, but they don't always have an alternative, and that's unfortunate. You need to, where are you going to put these people? Uh, I don't know. You know, yeah. what's the plan? Just moving them? Just sweeping them out? That's not right. Wait, it, they're co- they're trying to come up with an alternative. I know. You know. Well, we'll see what happens. <sighs> uh, it's late. I'm tired. Uh, it's time to end this. <laughs> it's Tuesday, and, and I can't wait till Friday. I can't wait till Wednesday, Thursday, and then Friday. Yeah, yeah. right. Uh, your mix of sun and clouds today with a high of 67. It is 44 right now in downtown Springfield. I'm Steve Nagel, and that's the news on Rock 102. Ah, oh, yeah. Well, the Rock 102 Springfield's classic rock. It's 853, and Bon Jovi with Bax and Nagel on Rock 102. Going to be a uh, mix of sun and clouds today with a high of 67. Tomorrow, uh, more of the same with a high of 64. It's 44 right now in downtown Springfield. Steve, it is a shop Tuesday. And uh, today at 9 o'clock, if you go to rock102.com, you can save 30% off to Union Station restaurants in Northampton. At Union Station, you can enjoy uh, both the uh, the world-famous Tunnel Bar and the new Notch 8 Steakhouse. The Notch 8 Steakhouse features daily Appy Hour and half price appetizers from 4 to 6. And it all starts at 9 o'clock this morning at the Shop 30 store at rock102.com. Don't miss out. 30% off of the Tunnel Bar and in the new steakhouse, that sounds uh, pretty damn good. I don't want to miss out on that. I know. Um, do we have uh, something? Oh, here? yeah. You know what? We do. We do. Uh, so this is a this is a pretty uh, pretty interesting. There's a uh, there was a documentary made many many years ago about one of your all time favorites, uh, Tom Petty. It's called oh. Tom Petty. God, Heartbreakers pl- Beach Party. Please uh, send me to send me to a movie theater. Uh, well, ASAP. The uh, the movie is being uh, re released for the first time in many many years. A classic eighties documentary, uh, and it's only coming to theaters on the twenty on the seventeenth and twentieth of October. It's been years since this thing has been available. It's a wicked cool thing, and uh, we have tickets for you to see this. Uh, documentary. You can either, either be at the uh, the Hampshire Mall or, the, or Buckland Hills. Tell you what, the tenth caller right now at two nine three one zero two one. I'll give you a pair of tickets to see the brand the brand new release of the uh, the Tom Petty uh, documentary from the nineteen eighties. Oh, it'll be like I'm living like a refugee. Yeah. Absolutely, and yeah. you can maybe bring an American girl Ooh, with you, and I can free fall into the seats at the movie theater. Yes, oh, yes, man, you're so bad. Oh, oh, oh you I see, see what, what I did? did? Yeah. Yeah. 
Anyway, 10th caller right now at 293-1021 will get to go see the film, either the 17th or the 20th. Uh, it's only shown in select theaters throughout the United States on those two days only. So it's a pretty special thing. If you can't get your fill here, you can get it at a movie theater. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Okay, yeah, good about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. It's 856 on Rock 102. <laughs>